In the previous video, we dropped the primary key constraint and then we added two people with the exact same ID. So you can see right here, if you perform a select where the ID is equal to one, then you should get two people back. So Alfreda right here and also right here. So now let's go ahead and try to add the primary key back and see what happens. So to add a primary key, we simply have to alter the table. So alter table and the actual table is person. And remember when we dropped the constraint or the primary key constraint, we simply said drop and then constraint and then the actual constraint name. Now to add a primary key, we can simply say add and then primary key. And now the primary key receives an array of values. And this is because you can compose a primary key based on multiple columns. In our case, we only need the ID to be the primary key and that's absolutely sufficient. But there are times where one column is not sufficient. In that case, you can pass multiple values inside of this parenthesis. But for us, we want to add back our primary key, which was the ID. So let's go ahead and pass ID. And before I press enter, I want you to have a guess whether this command will work. So we want to add a unique constraint on the column ID. So we want the ID to be unique for every single row. So if you have guessed it correctly, then the answer is no. And this is because we cannot add a primary key when the rows are not unique in our table. And this is true, right? So you can see right here that if I pretty much just select, so you can see right here, you can see that we have two people with the same ID, right? So this doesn't work. Now the way to fix this is to actually delete so we have to delete these two people, right? So the way that we delete a record from our table, and I know that we haven't learned this, but I'm gonna cover this in a later chapter. We have to simply say delete and then from, and then the actual table name, so person. And then we have to use the where clause because otherwise we will delete every single person in this table, which we don't want. And then ID, equals to one. If I press semicolon, you can see that the delete returned two rows. So you can see right here. And this is because we had two people with the same ID. Now, if I go ahead and try to select, so select where the ID is equal to one, you see that we have zero rows. Now we are absolutely sure that the ID column is unique in our table called person. And in fact, let's go ahead and add the actual person with ID of one. So let's go ahead and add. Now, if I clear the screen and then select start from person where ID equals to one, we should only have one person. So now what we can do is add the actual primary key constraint. So let's go ahead and say alter and then table person add primary key and then the actual column name will be ID. If I press enter, you can see that this time it works because the IDs were uniquely in this table. So now we can go ahead and pretty much describe the table and then person enter. And now you can see that we have our primary key back. So remember, if you want to add a primary key, you have to make sure that the column that you want to be the primary key is unique in every single row. This is all for now. If you have any questions on dropping and adding primary key constraints, drop me a message. Otherwise, join me in the next video. See ya.